Welcome. This episode is a cracker. Uh, Although, it's a little different to normal. And that's due to one reason. <laughs> we were boarded uh, while we were sleeping. Uh, and said person uh, stole a lot of our footage for this particular part of our journey. Yes. Uh, we, uh, somewhere between midnight and 6 a.m. with all six of us on board asleep and all these clears and these covers were down, somebody snuck on board and snooped around and stole some things from us. A lot of that was our footage. Yeah. The rest replaceable, footage not so much. But what we have done is well, we've gathered up as much footage as we can from our other devices, GoPros, that sort of thing, and we still have something to show you uh, of our journey north from Maine and Nova Scotia and then back again. Yeah, and uh, actually I think it's more of an adventure than we ever thought it was going to be, and I think you will actually enjoy the journey. There is numerous things that went on in our world at that time mm. uh, that is testament to the fact that life goes on Regardless what? of your lifestyle. Yeah, life happens. <laughs> life happens. Uh, in this episode, we have a hurricane that is genuinely coming for us mm -hmm. and we run from it. Yes. Uh, we have a health diagnosis that is heavy enough that we are not prepared to share it with the public and you're welcome. Uh, despite your perhaps concern, <coughs> curiosity or otherwise, mm. uh, you just need to take our word that your day will be better not knowing. For not <laughs> carrying it. We also uh, find ourselves getting grilled by the CBP. Mm. And yes. On arrival back into the States. We also get boarded. Um, yes. And uh, perhaps we start from the beginning. We are a family of six who call the ocean our home. We feel incredibly blessed to be doing this life together as a young family. Embracing the ups and downs of what is a life at sea. This is our floating home. Happy days. And you are invited to follow along as we share this incredible adventure. Have a laugh and be inspired to pursue a life less ordinary. Click the subscribe button to keep up to date as we see where this journey takes us. We headed up the east coast of the US to Maine, which is a stunning part of the world. We truly yeah, did love it. Maine was lovely. I don't know if this is going to do it justice, but there is a minefield in front of us. You've just got to take each one as it comes. Right, plotting a course. Definitely an argument for a monohull in this part of the world. I've only got to think about half the boat as far as slotting these. And we're doing nine knots through the water, so we're, yeah, we're, we're not going slow. We had heard that it was like somebody had spilled a packet of skittles yeah, through the ocean. Yeah, that was our favourite uh, analogy. And, and it's like, so true. Surely not. Wow. They're everywhere. Yeah, fishing rods. <laughs> the first time they've had a fishing rod in the Atlantic. They've been very patient. We've been using hand reels. Whoa, beauty. Oh, I nailed it. Look at this anchorage. We've just, just dropped, dropped the hook. No one else here. We're gonna go and have an explore. On uh, other news, we also didn't hit any crab pots and uh sorry lobster pots and uh managed to jibe through them and around this island sailed all the way in so it was awesome we then headed further east towards nova scotia uh and it was like day and night uh even though they're in a similar region most definitely different countries and man yes. did it feel like it uh the tides shrunk to a third for argument's sake from the large tides of Maine to what I'll call manageable tides of Nova Scotia. Uh, yes. The lobster pots no disappeared. No more lobster pots. Oh gosh, that was a relief. Yeah. Yeah. And there was still fog. There yeah. was still fog. I can see Canada! Oh my goodness, we had to get so close before we were allowed to see it. But the fog is clearing and we get our first glimpse of McNutt's Island. 
Ireland. <laughs> Oh, it's a lovely day for a chip. <laughs> All right, these guys are frozen. I've just got out here and they're uh... <laughs> What's your bottom lip doing? Oh, sweetie. Just sit up there for a bit warm up. Out of the sun. In the sun, rather. Out of the sun. Talk me through it. What's it feel like? Well, I can't breathe in because I can't put my toes in. But I have to dive underneath. Alright, let's catch this one and then we'll get you in. Alright, lay down. Hey, mate. Yeah, start paddling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take your time, take your time. Ew. <laughs> oh, that one's for the highlight reel. <laughs> Ew. Yes. Yeah. That, that was a good one. <laughs> I did notice that the locals have boots on. <laughs> to be fair, Ted has the thinnest wetsuit and he's been the bravest. I don't think there's any waves down there. <laughs> no, no, honestly, if you want to not catch waves, stay there. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your plan? Halifax itself as a city will always be with us for numerous reasons. Yes, um, but we loved um, being able to uh, pull up right there on the foreshore and for free, you can hang out there absolutely. on the dock all day long. Right in the guts of Halifax. It's and it, it was amazing. incredible, so we really enjoyed that. We're tied off downtown, so we're going to go explore soon. Got the skateboards ready. Look, restaurant's right there, so Chris and I are going to have a date night tonight. So good. We're still tied off to the dock here. It's absolutely stunning. Beautiful, beautiful downtown Halifax with all their ferry lights and waterfront restaurants. It's just been amazing. The fog's just coming in and everyone's starting to head off home. So it's quietening down and we're gonna stay here overnight. Pretty special. We're just about to push off the dock and um, it's pretty busy. Mm -hmm. ready Give to, us a wee bit there, John. Ready to push off? Yeah. Alright, get rid of it, champ. We just left the city dock and now we're heading out to McNabs Island. And for the city dock, it's $2 per foot 
at night and then at day it's free. There was also an island quite close to Halifax that we got familiar with, McNabs Island, and that was really lovely. Walks on there, fresh blueberries. Yeah, it was, it was really go special. For, go foraging. Yeah. It was a, a really neat scenario where only two nautical miles away from the hub of Halifax is an uninhabited island where yeah. you can anchor off. So it mm. just worked really well. Yes. About setting up, go for a kite. What's really neat about this part of the world at this time of the year, it's um, just eight, 8 o'clock now, 8 p.m. and we're still setting up kites. It's wind blowing, the sun's still up, it's still reasonably warm. Awesome. Love it. Chong's going to have a lash. Bella's going to go until she can't see anymore. <laughs> and Ted's already flogged. Yep. And my kite has a mind of its own. We also did some boat work. Mm. Boat work happened in Nova Scotia and a big shout out to the guys at East River Shipyard. They yeah, were super legends. helpful. Yes. We dropped our rudders in water. In water, in cold water, but it was clear water, so that's a win. Yes. And uh, fixed some damage that we had from way back on the Pacific side of Guatemala. Uh, yeah. So the rudders were actually fine. We sort of we thought yeah. they might have been more waterlogged, but they were actually all right. Yeah, yeah but Absolutely. we still repaired that leading edge and changed out the anodes and on the props. Did, Did the, the pinion seal. Pinion seal, so separated yeah. the engine from sail drive, which is a reasonably large job, but the guys yeah. here were, were super helpful. Yeah. All right. All right, ready to go. Did you you there? Us trying to figure out how to put the rudders back in. <laughs> um, so we're just having a team talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> off to a good start, you <laughs> 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 uh. Oh, it's lovely in. Yeah. Trying to be fresh. Yeah. I've done the line. Yep. Okay. Oh, Dunton? Going. I've got it with my foot. I know, Bell's just trying to get very right far. Oh. Hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. We're through. We're through. Nice. Got it through? Yeah. Okay. Put, this, put the nuts on, please. No, I've still got the weight. Beautiful. 
Yeah, you can just let it down when you want. Alright, letting it down now, ready? Yeah, and That's we'll, just, it. we'll yeah. just tighten it in a minute. Could be more idyllic conditions to change an addo, that's for sure. Um, but you've got your... 4-3. 4-3 wetsuit. It's almost like it better be cold because I'm hot. <laughs> um, Bit of a mission to get on and off. It is. We're in full. But the water's really clear here. Yeah. Isn't it? It is. It is really good clear. Good viz. Um, even though the day is pretty average, mm. the viz is good, so let's believe it works well. Yes. Alright. Need that one first, eh? Screws with their Loctite on already. Let's go. How's it? Oh, beautiful. Okay. Right, eh? This is one of those jobs that I've been wanting to do for ages, so don't judge me too much on the state of the anodes. They're still there, but they certainly need replacing. All right. really crumbly. Interesting. Well, that was relatively smooth. Let's have a look at how pretty it is now. Next step is to give the props a clean. One step at a time. Okay. Done as the thunder rumbles behind me. I know. Anyway, stoked. One of those ones that I've been thinking about for ages. Ordered them like months ago. And uh, the play on your mind a wee bit, but now the job to pick off, yes, pick it off. today. It's de definitely a bit of swell too. The local race club here of Halifax is still getting out there and I love it. It's so good.
So the whole idea behind going up to Canada for us as Australians or New Zealanders, kids, uh, Aussies, we're, we're Kiwis, but whatever, we're from that <laughs> corner of the world. Canada is for us. Oh, the, it seems like the end of the earth. It's opposite like the side. other side of the world to so where we're from. That was a huge attraction to us mm. and uh, the option to put on a jumper. Yeah. Uh, it had been a while, yeah. so we were pretty keen. Mind you, to, we had some pretty warm days there in did. Halifax anyway. 100%. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, the other reason was hurricanes. Yes, yeah. To get out of the sort of Caribbean box that is hurricane zone. Mm. So we went a fair way north. Uh, uh, and now we know that it's not really a yeah, don't, hurricane. Don't go to Nova Scotia. <laughs> hurricane if, refuge. If you want to get out of hurricanes. Yeah. Uh, they go there. Uh, they do. And we learned that the hard way. Mm. Um, we were in Halifax at the time and right at the end of the forecast, thank you Predict Wind, uh, we could see something spinning up way down off the top of the Bahamas and thought, mm. do you know what, I don't think that's going to come anywhere near us because at the time the forecast was actually suggesting it would and when it's that far out you go, it probably won't because it'll change. Yeah. Saw the forecast was not improving, we filled up the boat and just started heading west. It was looking at curving at the time up through Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. And we thought the furthest west we can get, the safer we're going to be. I looked at the weather for one last time and went, do you know what, I, I think it's going to be a direct hit here. And I think we can get across to the US East Coast. We yeah. had to navigate our own small low pressure system mm. um, in the Bay of Fundy. Yes. Um, and I said, what do you think guys? And I was on the helm at the time and Bells pretty much grabbed the helm, spun the boat around and said, we're getting after it. Let's go. We thought, no, let's go as far south as we can and then we won't mm. have the weather systems that accompany the hurricane at all. We should be south enough. It's, so it, that got us to New Bedford by sunset on the third day. Yes. So we uh, literally sailed across to the east coast as Fiona took our stern and rolled through Nova Scotia. So it yeah. was, it was, we genuinely, uh, we were blessed that Bells did grab the helm and spin us around and <laughs> point our bows uh, accordingly. Yes. It worked really well. Um, so we come in, sunset, New Bedford, we pick up a mooring ball as, Which we'd as arranged requested. with the marina. We yellow mm -hmm. flag up. We've just run from a hurricane. We're pretty knackered. Yeah. And and the passage wasn't awesome. Like it wasn't a good it weather was, window. It, it was, was just pretty messy weather. It was doable. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, oh goodness. But we got we got in. We did, and we'd arranged to meet CBP at eight a.m. the following morning. They were happy for us to spend the night on the on the mooring ball, but not not go to land. And so that's we followed those that instructions. We had everything closed off in here. We were elated with the fact that we had outrun a hurricane. Yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, I got to bed at about midnight that night. And somewhere between midnight and 6 a.m., uh, we were boarded mm. in New Bedford, Massachusetts, of all places, all sketchy places in the world we've been, is where we were boarded. Uh, and somebody snuck on over the top of our cabin. And I've got pretty good ears to hear, or at least so I thought. Yeah, uh, but we were tired. I mean, we we've been naked. at sea for three days. So we've woken up here in Massachusetts after arriving yesterday, quarantine flags still up, and we've been boarded during the night and my phone's been stolen. It was plugged our, in. Our clues are open, our door's just, open. Just here, this door was open. There's footprints on the back. This zip out here is always shut. This kite bag has been shut. It's been out here because we need to repair it. Yeah. Someone's been in there. You haven't been in there, but no just leave it. What did they steal? No, well, they probably opened it to see what it was. This this zip is always shut. In fact, this zip this zip is the dud one. So we always go out this one. All right. And then there's like dirty footprints on the back. Like shoe footprints. So they've come in, had a look in here. Open the door. Open the door. Seen, seen my phone was there and uh, stolen it. I mean, it could have been worse. There's, and there's like a speaker, there's computers. There's computers and the passports are just here. Like it wasn't locked, but and this- And just because we're so tired after passage, this door, anyone, like we would have woken up. This, this door was shut. And it squeaks. <laughs> so someone's come along and just opened it enough. 
to come in, reach in here, and steal it. So that's mightily crap. All of our, a lot of our footage is on that phone. Dad's work. A lot of my work stuff. It's got passcodes and whatnot, but that's a significant. And to check into the country again. Yeah. Do something else. The, C, the the CBP app uh, that we <laughs> that we tried to check in on last night it was on the phone. It was on the phone. So I don't know what that means. We got customs this morning. Eight thirty. Yeah, I need to call them. It's six thirty in the morning. I just got got up to go to the bathroom. To ask to figure it out. I don't even know why I came up. Oh. Like we've been in countries that like Mexico. <laughs> this has never happened. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Just leave straight away. Well, we can't ask. Not really. Bless them. They obviously needed it more than we did, uh, but we bit. Uh, misfortunate. We were a bit rattled by that the next morning. That was pretty full yeah, on. Yeah, called the harbour master and he was like, you what? And I was like, well, one yeah. one of the things that got taken was the phone and that was how we were communicating oh, with, with the, the CBP. app, with the CBP. Yeah, with the robot. And so we had to... Contact what? the officials and say, uh, we've been boarded. And they said, whatever, we'll check the cameras. And they said, oh, it was dark, we couldn't see. I said, no, oh, fancy that. For what it's worth, uh, the harbour master at New Bedford was absolutely astounded. Uh, and then we do go, go in at 8 a.m. to see the CBP officers. They were also astounded. Yeah, and the marina was really ap apologetic as well. Um, they said nothing like that's ever happened there. So it was super unique situation, circumstances, but I mean, it doesn't change where we're at. Key point for those who have been following our journey for a wee while, remember the Esther scenario that we had when we were going into the US. If not, there's an episode up here somewhere that you can go and click on and have a squiz at how that worked. Mm. We needed to undo that. Yes. Or in other words, start it again. Yeah. So uh, we took a road trip into Maine across the land border between at Canada yep. and the US. Mm -hmm. And just to give this context, because I know there's going to be some viewers out there that are going to find this fascinating and you're welcome. Learn by doing is what we're good at. Uh, the, the land border heading into the US asked us all the questions and we were completely straight. This is what we've been doing. This is where we've been. This is what our plans are. Mm -hmm. We're on a boat. We're starting our 90 days Esther. We're spending a couple of nights in Maine in an Airbnb to go and pick apples in the orchard. And then we're coming back across. We're going to look for a weather window. And go to the US. AKA with our boat. run from a hurricane. Uh, and, and then sail into the States uh, on our vessel and they went okay so then fast forward we're, we're now in New Bedford we've, we've run from a hurricane we've uh, been boarded and now we're standing in front of a couple of <coughs> lovely CBP officers that uh, suggested we were circumventing the law bring it in so uh, after being broken into last night while we were sleeping we almost got denied entry into the US yeah. Even though we did it exactly the same way as we did it down the southern end when we went into Florida, we were told that we were uh, we circumventing the system and putting the officers in a tough position. Meanwhile, we did it exactly the same as what we did in Florida and we called the guys in Miami at the time and they said, not a problem. We told the guys at the border crossing at Houlton uh, between Canada and the US, they said, not a problem. Yeah. And then we get here and they're like, Alright guys, it's a problem. Where is it? So we're feeling pretty icky at the moment. But um, anyway, onwards and upwards. They gave us a hard time. They gave us a hard time. They challenged how we had approached the whole Esther uh -huh. thing. And our intentions were as we have laid them out from the get-go. Yeah. Uh, we're not interested in flirting the law, but we will play within the, the lines of the law, which is mm -hmm. what we were doing. They didn't see it that way. Uh, in the end, uh, the takeaway was despite uh, their disagreeance with our approach, uh, we conveyed that this wasn't the first time in which we had done it and that we had uh, earlier in the year gone through Miami and that wasn't a problem. And they said, well, who and how and lots of questions like that. And then it just became quite apparent that they just needed to get it off their chest. And so we listened. So we did lots of listening. And then they were kind enough to stamp our passports and, and let us in. Exactly right. So it worked out okay. Yes.
So then we had... Gosh. No, you go, but what? No, I'm going to go. Why? So then we had a complete brain switch when some good friends of ours yeah, uh, who were in Rhode say. Island said, hey, <laughs> surf's up. You want us to come pick you up and we'll go for a bit of a surf safari. And so we went from this mindset of pretty much running for our lives from Hurricane Fiona to, do you oh, wonder where the waves are going? We could surf, you could surf the hurricane yeah. swell. It was this massive mind trip. And man, did we find waves. Uh, yeah. it, was, it was on, so. Um, Super grateful to Steve and Claire for helping us out there. And huge, in more ways than we we're even gonna, yeah. just lots of ways that helped us out. They did. Thanks for coming on the journey. Stay with us as we sail south towards warmer climates, clear water, and of course, coconuts. So we're uh, upping our security game this evening, uh, Joshua Slocum style, if you know, you know. Uh, yeah, no, we'll be sweet tonight. Might be a bit of a yelchies from uh, anybody who decides to jump on during the night. Back in the uh, late 1800s, I think it was, uh, Slocum went around the world and somebody gave him a packet of tax. So that if he ever got boarded uh, during the night, the uh, unsuspecting uh, chap would uh, have a bit of a bit of a yelp when he jumped on board, and uh, he would know. So uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, just based on ratio, we'll be fine. But you know, high tech security for the win. <laughs> 